When designing protagonists for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Hidehiko Araki always had a simple idea in mind. For Jonathan, he wanted someone who could build the foundation for the Joestar family legacy. Then you had Joseph, who was supposed to be someone that could bend the rules of combat and created interesting outcomes. And from him, we saw Jotaro, a protagonist based off of Clint Eastwood, and possibly the first character ever conceptualized in these stages of creating JoJo. Thus, they all had a legendary status in Araki's eyes. So to follow them up, Araki decided decided to create someone who had a unique look and personality that hadn't been seen before in JoJo. Someone who felt like a close friend and had such a good heart that their stand reflected it. Thus, he created Josuke Higashikata and his stand, Crazy Diamond. <laughs> Josuke Higashikata is the main Jojo of Part 4 Diamond is Unbreakable, and the bastard son of previous Jojo lead Joseph Joestar, which begins the family tree weirdness that is the Joestar family tree, as he is technically the brother of Holly Kujo and the uncle of Jotaro, which is kind of funny when you think about it. Josuke spent his life growing up in the small town of Morio, which is based off of Araki's own hometown, Sendai, though after some strange occurrences begin to go down within the small town of Morio, Josuke's average life becomes a a bit more bizarre. Though in the face of adversity, he, along with the help from his allies, will work together to help defend his town from the malicious forces hiding within it, with Josuke himself even taking on the role of Defender of Morio. But before we get too into that, let's discuss the meaning behind his name and design. Let's start first with Josuke's design, because Rocky himself was very adamant on getting it into part 4, even having to turn down his own editor's advice, as they said, it was not suited for this era. But he wanted Josuke to be designed in a specific specific way for a reason. Josuke seemingly is designed off of the classic delinquent look based on the Yankee, a suburban youth countercultural movement which rejected the old rigid societal norms of Japan post-World War II. It got its name Yankee based on the fact that it took in a lot of Western influences from both their rock and roll hairstyles and rude speaking demeanors. Yankee as a subculture developed a certain look to it as well, with pompadours being adopted by a lot of people in that specific countercultural movement, as it was an outlandish looking but tough to maintain part of their personality. Thus, people who wore their hair in that specific style became very attached to it, and they got very upset if someone would either wreck or mock their do. Also, this delinquent subculture is where Araki pulled Josuke's stand cry from as well, as the stand cry Dora, which is basically the same as Ora, in itself is just an intention-grabbing end to a sentence that, when spoken in a more aggressive or gravelly tone, comes off as very profane or offensive. Now, Yankees were considered dangerous to normal society, and the group was labeled as delinquents, but for the most part, they were overall harmless, and given Araki's own personal rule-breaking nature and his desire to push the limits, along with the fact that he is also very Western-influenced, he likely viewed the social movement like it was, people who were sick of tradition. And given that around the time that Part 4 was written, the Yankee subculture had become a lot more of an everyday life thing, and he wanted to write a character that that fell into that culture itself. And speaking of Western influences in Araki's writing, Josuke's design is heavily inspired by the American rock icon, Prince, from his anchor symbol all throughout his outfit, down to his own uniform being very similar to one of the many that Prince wore during his time. Though, most interestingly, a connection can be seen in Josuke and Prince's hair, as Josuke's pompadour is a very well-maintained hairstyle and doesn't match up too well with Prince's own unkept pompadour. It actually seems more like the King of rock and roll's hair, Elvis. And funny enough, Elvis is a major figure in Prince's life, along with a huge influence on Yankee culture. But it goes even deeper than that, as Prince said that he always wanted to be like Elvis as a kid. He wanted to be the king of rock and roll, but his mom named him Prince and that was close enough for him. Along with this, Prince modeled a lot of the outfits that he wore off of things that Elvis himself wore during his career. And this idolization and imitation is seen very well in Josuke's character, as Josuke's own hairstyle is worn in honor of a man who saved his life as a child, a faceless figure who was supposed to be a representation of kindness and humanity, a theme that is actually represented very well in the future parts. Now name-wise, Josuke Higashikata's name is a strange one and requires a bit of a basic understanding of Japanese to understand how it can be read as Jojo. Well, you see, it actually comes from Josuke alone and has nothing to do with the Higashikata portion. First, you have the Jo portion of Josuke, and then the 
Shinsuke portion, which can be read as Joe. So altogether, his name can be read as Jojo. On top of this, Josuke's name also carries a meaning within it. Starting first with Higashikata, as we had to ignore that to find the Jojo. So Higashikata's name simply just means Eastern person or East person, which is likely selected to affirm that this Jojo would remain in Japan during his whole adventure, playing into the idea that Japan as a setting would be much more major than previous parts, which itself ended up being true. Along with this, the Jojo portion of his name, the first Jo can be read as battle or fight, along with read as someone who protects, and the Ske portion of his name can be read as to help or assist, and then when you put the two together, it can be read as someone who helps, which works really well for Josuke as a character, given that during the events of part four, Josuke acts as more of a supporting character to the rest of the gang, rather than your traditional protagonist. And one of the things that makes him so helpful is his stand, Crazy Diamond. <laughs> Crazy Diamond is a humanoid stand with a large build, being physically strong if not stronger than Star Platinum, and the body is covered in a gladiator style armor which has a heart motif found throughout its entire design. Along with this, Araki mentioned that when designing Crazy Diamond, he went for a contrasting design to Star Platinum's own design. This went down to even its own color palette, picking a lighter shade of purple than the one used in Star Platinum. And this was done likely not only to help readers identify them easier if they were ever on the same page, but also to show the difference between Josuke and Jotaro as delinquents, as Jotaro is a much darker, more stoic, aggressive Bancho delinquent, where Josuke was a lighter and passionate Yankee delinquent. Araki would later go on to describe in more detail the real difference between Josuke and Jotaro, and that's how he viewed and thus he gave Josuke a kind heart and an even kinder stand ability, this ability being Restoration. Restoration is the major ability of Crazy Diamond, which allows it to revert or fix objects or living things to a previous physical state via touch. With this ability, Josuke is able to repair or heal injuries rather quickly in a painless way as well, being fast enough to donut someone and fix them without them even noticing. In fact, people seemingly are unable to feel when a restoration has occurred, as on multiple occasions, people are shocked to find their injuries have been healed. Though this restoration is limited, as Crazy Diamond Diamond cannot fix things that have no cohesive parts, it cannot cure disease or illnesses as the person's body is what's harming them, thus the ability would have no effect, and they are unable to restore life to a dead organism, be it skin cells, dried blood, or even a fully dead creature. Though, even with these limitations, Crazy Diamond's ability is insanely powerful, as even though I describe it as healing or restoration, what Crazy Diamond is actually doing is seemingly matter manipulation, as if Josuke uses this ability when he's not emotionally stable the effect will twist and distort the object, fixing it in a mutilated form or repairing it wrong. And on top of that, Josuke also appears to be able to twist things willingly if he really needs to, as seen when he modifies the lotto ticket during the harvest arc to have a different name and number, or when he creates a wall from the ground below him in both Highway Star and Bites the Dust. Along with this, Josuke is also able to use a broken part of an object as sort of an anchor. This allows him to move damaged people or objects around by restoring them in a specific specific way. This is best seen when he saved Okiyasu from the grasps of Red Hot Chili Peppers by using his severed arm as the anchor for the restoration, or when he used the dry blood as a homing signal for his jury-rigged glass bullet. Though it should be mentioned that once an object has been set as the anchor for the restoration, it cannot be reversed. This is the reason why when Josuke sends Sheer Heart Attack back into Kira's hand, he can't just pull Kira back to him. Though the absolute scariest part of Crazy Diamond is that it can graft two things together if Josuke so pleases, like when he combined a living person with stone to make the living rock that became Angelo, or when he combined a person with a book, creating a living book that was Teranosuke. Though, even as powerful as Crazy Diamond is, what makes it such an interesting stand to watch is Josuke's usage of it, figuring out clever ways to either outsmart his opponent to use the ability to maneuver in an interesting way. You can definitely see a lot of the Joseph elements in Josuke's character, as Josuke really 
really changes how stand fights play out. And on top of Crazy Diamond's insane potential, it's also incredibly fast, with Josuke estimating that he could punch at 190 miles per hour. But that guess is definitely too short-sighted, as Crazy Diamond is able to keep up with, and in some cases, overwhelm stands like Star Platinum in speed. It's even fast enough to catch a bullet in the middle of the air that Josuke had barely any time to register. So his actual speed with Crazy Diamond is unknown, but it's likely around Star Platinum levels. Along with this, Crazy Diamond has enough physical strength to clearly punch through the abdomen of two people at once without showing any signs of resistance, and it can fire a bullet 50 to 70 meters accurately just by flicking it. Crazy Diamond is insane. It has so much potential, it's probably one of the strongest stands in the series, and it was Araki's favorite stand for quite a while. Now, Crazy Diamond gets its name from the Pink Floyd composition Shine On You Crazy Diamond, which was a nine-part song which was found on the ninth studio album, Wish You Were Here. Shine On You Crazy Diamond was a set of songs created to pay tribute to the former founding member of Pink Floyd, Sid Barrett, who was ousted from the band due to his drug abuse and troubling mental health issues. The name itself is in direct reference to Sid himself, with it spelling out Sid with the S in Shine, the Y in U, and the D in Diamond. This aspect of the song is reflected well in Josuke and his relation to his ability. As Josuke's crazy diamond, no matter how kind it may be, cannot bring something back when it is fully lost. And it's unable to heal his own injuries, much like how the musician Sid Barrett, who influenced millions, was unable to repair the damages between him and his friends, the other members of Pink Floyd. In fact, there's a really chilling story about Sid showing up during the recording session of Shine On You Crazy Diamond and no one recognizing him because of the physical change that he had gone through. Also, most importantly, he was unable to help himself. Along with this, in-universe, Josuke Stan isn't named by himself. It's actually named by Jotaro, which kind of fits with the theme of Shine On You Crazy Diamond being named by someone else. Along with this, the name used in the English localization, Shining Diamond, is pulled from the exact same reference, which actually raises some questions on if names need to actually be changed at all, because this literally carries the same meaning, and it's okay for some reason, but that's a debate for another time. Along with this, when Jotaro selected the name Crazy Diamond, it was likely based on his comment about the stand as a whole. That in a world where needless destruction is the norm, Josuke's stand is the kindest ability out there. And while he can lose control of it at times, that doesn't change the fact that it's a diamond in the rough. A crazy diamond, that is. Though when Josuke awoke to his ability, it wasn't good for him. As during the events of Stardust Crusaders, when Jonathan's body was influencing the bloodline to awaken to their stands, Josuke was also affected by this, and it came at possibly the worst time for him, as it happened during Morio shows the largest snowstorm in years, and because the town was underdeveloped at the time, the roads were not safe to drive on, though Tomoko Higashikata, Josuke's mother, out of desperation to save her son, tried to drive him to the nearest hospital, though the car got stuck and was trapped. Unsure of what to do next, a mysterious boy approached the car and offered his assistance. He looked like he was coming away from a rough spot himself, but he offers his assistance nonetheless, and thanks to this boy, Josuke is able to make it to the hospital safely and recover from this incident, and from that day on, he adopted the hairstyle in honor of that man. Araki mentioned in the 1994 interview with Hiroyuki Kitakubo that the man in the flashback was never anyone of significance. It's a flashback in and of itself and is supposed to represent the kindness of strangers in the world of Jojo, as Jojo is a story about people doing marvelous things. Along with this, the importance of this scene is to give us an understanding on why Josuke would actively wear a hairstyle that allows him to adopt the stigma that comes with it. People would look at him as if he was a delinquent no matter how nice he was on the inside because of how he dressed, but he did so because of how much he believed in the man who saved him that day. Josuke doesn't care about his outward appearance. Josuke is someone who seemingly doesn't care about others' outward appearances either, willing to help those in need even if they were just trying to kill him a chapter beforehand, because he likely has to deal with that sort of stigma in his everyday life given how he chooses to live, and he describes himself as someone who looks for love in a relationship as well, meaning he's the kind of guy who would care more about a girl's personality personality rather than how they look. And this is because Josuke is written as a reactionary protagonist or a reactionary character in general. In simple terms, he's someone who acts only as a reaction to someone else, making him a very different Jojo than we've had in the series beforehand and after actually, which makes sense given his name and his own personal gimmick is getting upset when someone disses his hair, something that someone has to actively do to get him to react. And an aspect of his reactionary nature is seen very well when he solves the bites the dust story arc by reacting to someone else's advice. 
though his reactionary mentality works great, especially when you compare him to this part's major antagonist, Yoshikage Kira. Now, Kira is an active threat. He is an active villain in the series. He goes out and kills people in a small number in a town that he lives in. And the best part is the rivalry is barely present on the surface level. Them as characters don't know each other, and their conflict only happens because of something that Kira does. So much so that Josuke actually ignores the initial call to action when Kira is introduced. But Kira killed someone close to him, which caused him to feel the reaction of Josuke's character. But the connection between the two becomes much more clear when you go a little deeper, especially into the events of the story, as they've been connected since the finalization of their characters. And I've covered a lot of this information in a previous video, but I'm going to reiterate a bit of it because that video is old and it needs a bit of updates. Now, Josuke and Kira fit perfectly within Araki's own personal philosophy of heroes and villains in Jojo, as well as working perfectly with the feeling of Part 4 itself, this being how people are more than they just appear on the surface, as what really made them opposites of each other is due to their own outward appearance, as Kira is a person who appears to be normal on the surface. He's a salary man who works a normal life and maintains his day-to-day -day schedule and networks with others. But deep down, someone who rigidly plans out his life one step at a time so that he can maintain his anonymity within the mundanity of that everyday life, and this allows him to go around killing as much as he pleases. Where Josuke, on the appearance, is someone who looks like an active threat on the surface as he adopts a delinquent's demeanor, but deep down he's a normal kid with an extremely kind heart with fears and goals and desires to live a happy life. And one of the most interesting aspects about the two is actually that Josuke and Kira actually have somewhat of the same goal, to live a somewhat peaceful life. They try to achieve these goals in polar opposite ways, of course. Along with this, even their stands reflect polar opposite personalities. Kira's Killer Queen is nothing but senseless destruction. It eradicates all that it touches, where Josuke's Crazy Diamond brings repair to needless destruction, even being shown to be the one complete counter to Kira's ability if used quick enough. And this is because Josuke is a perfect representation of everything that Part 4 was trying to do. Yes, he's not perfect. He he did make rash calls on people's outward appearances, a good example of this being Tonio. But when he makes those wrong calls, he usually makes up for it. He is the golden heart of Moriocho. He's someone who stands up and defends the town when called upon, holding true to the promise that he made to his passing grandfather, that he would protect the town with his life. Josuke is truly a glorious character done in a perfect way, so much so that he left quite an impression on Araki himself, as he was Araki's favorite character in the series for as far far as at least Steel Ball Run, but Araki never milked him for more than just Part 4, only making partial appearances in things like Thus Spoke Rohan Kashibe stories, as well as getting a bit of a continuation in the light novel Fourth Another Day. Hell, Araki was so adamant on defending what he believed Josuke's character to be like that even in a little gag manga where Josuke ends up killing two people in order to fix their friendship, he made sure to cut that from canon as soon as he realized it did not fit with Josuke case personality at all. And all of this made it all the more sweeter when Josuke was reimagined within Jojolian. Multiple times. It feels like Araki was really holding on to this reinterpretation since probably his creation of the character. Though with that all being said and done, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more videos like in the future, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash guy. Every little bit of support on Patreon helps this channel flow smoothly, and if you want to shine on like a crazy diamond but don't want to fall to the horrors of drug abuse, you can do so by buying a copy of Shimonetta, a boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist at buyshimonetta.com.